Shut up and sit down. Hi right, guys, I'm Dodge, this is Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio and today we're going to be painting Immotech the Stormlord. Um, we're going to be using mainly Model Air Metallics for this, but uh, I will try and guide you into what you can use if you haven't got those and using Games Workshop paints. So let's crack on. Obviously I've gone straight through a Vallejo primer, you can use your spray primer if you want. And this is Model Air Metallic Black, which is one of our new favourite... Um, silvers it just goes on so smooth if you haven't got this you can just use your lead belcher that's not an issue so you're going to be replacing that with lead belcher if you stick into the games workshop palette and we're going to do uh, nearly all of like all the main body parts with this except for those um, thigh guards or greaves whatever you would call them now i'm going to mix in a tiny bit of gun metal by model air metallic into the black and if you don't have that What's the next one up? I think it's Chainmail for Games Workshop. Just mix a little bit of that in instead. What we're going to do here is start bringing out the uh, pronounced areas anywhere where the light would hit. I do like the fact that these Model Air metallics um, blend really well um, and give a nice sheen. After that, we're just going to use Gun Metal on its own by Model Air Metallic. Watered down and uh, just picking up the raised areas of the thighs, top of the knees, top of the head, the uh, gauntlet on his arm. There's still a, a, quite a few more layers, so uh, you're going to be covering most of this, just leaving some of the rest of it showing. So, so that some of the undercolors showing, I should say. Uh, but if you use a wet palette or keep it watered down, you should blend these really, really nicely. Now this is steel, model air, and gun metal. Again, just adding a little bit more of a, a light colour to that um, original mix and just bringing up the finer points even further. As you can tell, this is very, very shiny because uh, Vallejo do some very nice metallics. So I'm hoping so far that's described um, the colours on the Games Workshop ones that you'll be using as well. Now this is no oil with Lamiate Medium as always. I went a bit thick on this so probably would have been better off to do it in a three layers because of the way this metallic works. If you're using Games Workshop stuff that's probably not going to be, be an issue because it's designed to wash those. But you're going to want to make sure that goes into all the recesses and generally pull all the shade down if it starts to pull. If you get too much, you know, pooling, just dry your brush and uh, just suck it off the model with the tip of your brush. The capillary action will pull all that in. Now we're going back to uh, Model Air Metallic again, steel. And now we're just almost edge highlighting the whole thing with that. Just picking out the um, sharp points of the armor on the knees. Um, any pronounced sharp edge really and for those of you that uh, watch our channel all the time and are wondering when are you doing some more green stuff tutorials well they're coming out on Monday or should be coming out on Monday and we'll be doing cloaks this cloak is obviously what reminded me of that so this is Prussian blue by model color mixed with black it's I don't think Games Workshop have a blue this dark but you could use Cantor Blue and add black to it to get a similar colour. We're going to cover the entire cloak in that. Just be careful, you know, not to get it on any of the other model. And it's probably best when you build this to um, not put the cloak on, like I did, like an idiot. I was in a rush to get on with the video and glued that on because it's fine cast. I can't risk snapping it off. I'll damage the model. This next colour is 30% Warboss Green and 70% Deep Sky Blue by Model Colour. You could use a tur Turquoise, Hawk Turquoise by Games Workshop as a replacement for this. And this is a Windsor Newton Series 7 and we're going to spend hours, <laughs> not exaggerating, hours going around all of these, uh, I don't know what they are. All the parts on the, on the cape, I don't know what this cape's actually made of. Then we're going to use Castellian Green Shade Wash and this is straight from the pot, as you can see. Um, working that into all the recesses and making sure you give everything a good covering because those colours are very bright at the moment. 
this will also put shade in the middle of each of those bits of armor um, so if your edge highlights on there aren't so neat this will help neaten it up you could always um, let that dry and use a smaller brush and just paint some of that wash into the center to neaten up your um, neaten up your edge highlights as well now this was a huge pain because um, I glued the cloak on so I had to go on the inside as well on the underneath and try not to hit any of the silver work I'd done now we're going to go to Games Workshop's Warpstone Glow and basically start edge highlighting the tops of these uh, didn't show up very well to be honest after those washers but it's very subtle and it's there and you can see it better with your own eyes rather than on camera we start touching the corners of those up and I did attempt to put the lightning strikes down but it probably would have been better to do that before the wash just following the general theme from the um, blister pack artwork could have used the uh, warpstone glow and then gone over again with milk green which I might do now the models finished and I can see the entire result now we're using game color royal purple if you don't have this you could probably get away with using Nagaroth knight but um, the rest of this Necron army has got this colour on it, so I thought I'd use this one to make it match. Which obviously makes a lot of sense. He wants to stand out on the battlefield, but I also want to make him look like part of the army. So that's the entire chest plate that's done with that. And those um, thigh guards as well. I did both the thigh guards in that purple, and I looked at the art and realised he's got two layers. So just do the top one for that. Because the bottom one is going to be Model Air Metallic Gold. Now I don't have much in the studio in the way of um, Games Workshop Gold, so I don't know what the match for this is. It does look like a slightly darker Rune Lord Brass though. So you could probably find that one in your local shop or in your collection. This is very watered down because um, his armour is pretty smooth at the top and we don't want anything clumping up. It needs to look rather regal. And now before we go any further, we don't want to risk getting wash on anything, so we're going to do the Drushy Violet wash now on all those uh, purple parts. This is, again, is uh, straight from the pot because I wanted to darken it down quite considerably. Doesn't matter if it pulls in the uh, rib cage in the gaps, that's fine because we're going to paint those green later on. And once that's dry, it should give it a much deeper purple look. Now we're going to use the Model Air Metallic Gold and mix that with steel. So whatever Games Workshop colours you've got there, just mix it with the uh, other silver that you've started with. And we're going to start working this very, it's very wet. We're going to start glazing this from the gold centre to the um, edges of the armour. This will take a couple of layers for it to really start showing up. Also started pinpointing a few hot spots on the armour as well to bring some more details in there. Now I'm using Seraphim Sepia straight from the pot, so the colour wasn't quite rich enough for me. But I'm not, I am covering the whole thing, but I'm mainly pulling the rest of it to the, uh, to the shoulders where the head, closest to the head, so um, that's the deepest recess and that's the richest colour. So then it blends out from the gold into those silvers and should give us a real nice transition. It's also going to help pronounce the patterns on the armor as well. But obviously you don't want to drown it in this, you want to keep in control. As you can see I've put it on and then I'm spreading it around to uh, even it out a bit rather than add more where I think I might need it. Then we're going to go back to that previous mix of uh, Model Air Metallic Gold and Steel and redo those edges now they've got a slightly oranger tone to them and this will really start standing out and at this point I know you'd be able to use Rune Lord Brass as a replacement also doing the same thing um, on the headdress or headgear but only going in the top corners of those because now we're going to edge highlight those uh, with silver we're going to start bringing out the pattern on the armour with um, the model air metallic silver as well Again, I'm using my Winsor Newton Series 7 because they're quite fine lines and need some like, good control there. And there is a lot of edges to do on this model. Loads, but uh, if you just take your time with it, it should look fine. You can always add extra colours in there, guys, on washers if you're not happy with the results you know, that we get in here. 
as you can see that's really starting to come along now and stand out we're using warpstone glow as a uh, base coat here and the Windsor Newton to paint in between those ribs now because of this style of model and all its recesses and edges we will be giving this one an oil wash so if uh, your greens not perfectly straight in those rib cages don't worry about it if you use the gloss varnish and then an oil wash or pin wash with the oils that will um, go all the way around the inside edges giving it a dark line making it look a lot neater and obviously we've done his weapon in the same warpstone glow we're now going to use warpstone glow and add a little bit of moot green you can see how watered down this um, this paint is. It's barely showing up at all. But we're just going to pick out some spots on the um, lance. Is it a lance of destruction? I can't remember exactly what the weapon's called. But uh, we're going to start bringing the, those bright colours towards the edges. But on one side I went to, to the middle because uh, I thought I'd break it up. And I'm just following the um, box art. Because I'm not used to painting the glowing effect on something quite like this. Now we're going to add even more moot green to that mix this way our transitions are going to be nice and smooth all the way through as you can see we're starting to build up that colour in just those spots and that's going to leave dark greens in the other spots making a real nice contrast of colour at this point I'm just putting tiny bits of this uh, moot green mix on and uh, feathering it out with a very wet brush now it's basically just moot green on its own, really watered down to uh, finally bring up those colours to a uh, real sharp, shiny point. And you can see that the time taken and the glazing techniques on here are really starting to pay off. Obviously the, um, the sphere on top is uh, going to be brighter on top. We'll try and add some lightning on there later but um, it doesn't show up very well on camera because it's very subtle and to uh, make that colour uh, to do the lightning we added Nurgle Green into the Moot Green mix which makes it a bit more pale but still bright green and as you can see it's not showing up very well on here that's because of all the um, light you can see how bright it is reflecting back off my hand but um, we did put those on there you can also use this colour as well to um, edge highlight the blades even more bring them out even more give them a real sharp looking edge now the staff has got a, a marble effect on it so we went back to that Prussian blue by model colour and a mixture of black could have done this at the beginning but I wasn't quite sure how I was going to paint it And there's a couple more bits that need to be painted that colour on the staff. As you can see they're still black at the moment and we'll work our way up there and paint those as well. Now this is Hawk Turquoise, Turquoise by Games Workshop. And as you can see that's quite a stark line I'm putting on there. But uh, not to worry because we're going to blend that out with uh, washers and highlights. It's basically a case of matching up lines, making some of them thicker than others and putting lots of curves and different angled shapes to it. There's really no pattern to it to make the uh, marble effect work. It does look a bit drastic when you first do this but um, if you use a really fine brush you can really bring in those details. Now we're going to add off-white by model colour into the Hawk Turquoise and water that down and we're going to pick out any part of the marble that separates into multiple directions we're just going to pick those bits out to give them a bit more light and a bit more a bit more contrast as you can see it start to come together it's uh, not an easy thing to do uh, I'd like to try and do another tutorial just on marble and if your highlight goes a bit too bright I mean I'm quite happy with that highlight because I know what's coming next and uh, we're going to end up washing this down and when we wash it down it's going to pull all those colours to that darkest uh, blue and make them look uh, smooth and natural like marble so this is just Dragon Off Nightshade by Games Workshop from the pot and because it's straight from the pot it's just going to blend all those together really really nicely and give a nice coat around it if you wanted to you could add a little bit of a gloss afterwards to make it look more like marble but uh, I haven't tried that yet 
You just want to be careful that you don't put too much on. You're not giving this a wash, you're sort of painting it on. As you can see, that's uh, really darkened down now. And just give that bright turquoise blue a uh, much more subtle transition. Now I'm going back to Steel by Model Air Metallic. Just to break up the staff a little bit more, make it look even more interesting. And then we're just going to follow that same steel pattern that we've done, that we have done on the rest of the armor. But uh, there's a bit there, and there's a bit above his hand as well, and a bit just underneath the staff. It's uh, easy to miss, which I think I've missed on this bit. I'll touch it up later. Now this is polished gold by Game Color. And again, it's just a Windsor Newton because we're trying to keep a lot of control and we want a fine point. And we're just going to overbrush the um, parts that stand out on his staff. As you can see, I'm struggling to get that in focus there. I'm going to overbrush both sides of that and also paint the underneath of that sphere in the same steel colour. Now for a highlight of that purple armour, we're going to be using Alien Purple by Game Air, but if you haven't got that, you could just use Xenos Purple, Xavius Purple. It's pretty much the same colour, you could use that as a highlight. And uh, go around all those edges. Obviously the loincloth thing is an absolute nightmare to do. And. Uh, what lock bronze is then used on the back because I'd almost forgot this. I was so focused on the front of the model that um, I'd forgot to do this part. And we're using the warp lock bronze because that's basically the colour in the rest of the army for most of the metallic parts and it's going to match. And it also makes it stand out a little bit more from the rest of the model. Doesn't matter if you get that on the inside at all because we're now going to go through the inside and using model air metallic steel to uh, put some fine lines in there and if you end up hitting the uh, bits that you've done in warp block bronze it's not going to matter because we're going to highlight those up anyway because the bits you're going to hit are the edges and they're going to be highlighted up in a second using brass scorpion And you can literally just paint straight over that silver and it'll just give an un, like um, a highlight from underneath. Just a slight transition, it'll just look natural anyway. So you don't have to be too worried about getting silver on your back parts. Of course, I'm just aiming this towards the uh, top highlights of the spine. Then we're gonna water that down. Not water it down, we're gonna water down some Agrax Earth Shade. You can see that's really watered down, and we're gonna start working that into the uh, recesses and along all those brass scorpion parts. That's gonna um, make the um, shade look a lot better and bring those colors together so they look like part of the same machine. And once that's done, I decided to um, add some Agrax Earth Shade really watered down to the seals and the markings on the front of the armor plate. But obviously it's really watered down, you don't want to go over the top here, but it will help them stand out and add an extra color to that armor, just bringing the whole model together. It also pays to uh, put a tiny bit in, in the um, joins, and all that's left to do then is uh, give them an oil wash he hasn't got a base yet because we're designing some Necron bases that will be cast in at some point. So there's no point doing his base, but the, as you can see, once you've done the pin wash with the oils, all those details really start to stand out. And that's it guys. I hope this helped you with your Necron models or you just enjoyed watching it. If you like our videos, hit like, hit subscribe and uh, share with your friends. We'll see you on Monday. Thanks for watching.